Arium here. This is the maiden voyage of the digital Arium into the YouTube territory for Photoshop, ZBrush, 3ds Max, Maya, uh, kind of 2D and 3D graphics programs, kind of tutorials on YouTube. I know there's plenty of those out there, but I like to cover things that other people might not cover or might be a little bit harder to find. So in this particular video, the very first one, I'm going to show you how to record actions in Photoshop and then translate those actions into your express keys on a Wacom tablet. Now I have CS6 open here. I have a file that I put together in about five or ten minutes a couple months ago. Nothing too fancy. Um, if you want to know how I did this kind of thing, it's more of a fun fundamentals tutorial. If you want me to go over those techniques and stuff that I use, I am more than happy to do that in later tutorials. <clears throat> but for the purposes of this tutorial, it's going to be strictly te technical. So I have CS6 open, I have a Wacom Intuos 4 medium tablet. If you don't have a tablet, I highly recommend you go out and you know spend the money and buy one. If you're really serious about wanting to get into this kind of thing, they are absolutely I invaluable. They're amazing. So I'm in my painting workspace. If you come over here to the top right hand corner, these are your workspaces. I'm in the painting one, comes with CS6 by default because I primarily paint, as you can see. I'm more of a conceptual kind of guy. Um, so I dock the history uh, menu. If I want, if you want to dock something in CS6, you go to Window. And for the purposes of this video, we're going to use Actions. So we'll go ahead and show you how to dock this. Click on Actions. Now, if you hit these two little triangles, it says Collapse to Icons. If you click that, it'll bring it to an icon, and then you can click and drag. And as soon as you see that little blue line come up there, just release your mouse. So now that we have the Actions Actions docked, let's go ahead and open it. So recording actions in Photoshop CS6 is fairly straightforward. Let me go ahead and delete this one. This is the default action set that you will get. Now you can create a new set of actions. Um, the only set I have created is by default, which is the default actions. You can create a new set by going to this folder here. If you click on this icon, you can create just one simple new action. Or of course you can delete. It's the same set of buttons you'd see. Uh, let me get this call out of the way. If you'd see it right here, down here on the layers menu. So let's go ahead and create a new one. And I like to flip my canvas horizontally. It's very nice for compositional purposes. I haven't actually ever flipped the image that I'm about to flip, so we might see some pretty serious uh, discrepancies and some things we won't like. So anyway, let's create a flip horizontal. I like to stick with function keys F7 to F10 just because I know by default these keys aren't tethered to anything in Photoshop CS6. Uh, they're not hotkeys for anything, but just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and hit Command as well. You can hit Shift and Command or just Shift. Uh, it's based on your personal preference. I like to hit Command. Now because I'm on a Mac, I won't be able to hit F7 just as it is. Uh, I have to use the function key with the F7 key because my F7 is already rewind if I have media. So if I hit F7, nothing will happen in Photoshop. See, nothing's happening. So in order for this to work, I have to hit Command Function and F7. So let's go ahead and record this. Now you see this little pop-up right here, or this uh, this little red light comes on, or red circle, much as it would if like you were doing like some FaceTime with someone, or you know you're recording something on a video camera. So now all we have to do is flip the canvas because it's recording all of our actions that we take. To flip a canvas in Photoshop CS6, come up to Image, Image Rotation, Flip Canvas Horizontal. And you see now we have our canvas flipped horizontal and it looks okay. There's some definite form discrepancy here in the head and the body. This was thrown together pretty quick, um, but it looks okay. But now that we have it flipped, that's the only thing we want it to do. We only want it to flip once every single time we, we hit that combination of keys that we just set. So we'll go ahead and hit stop. So now if we hit command function, because I'm on a Mac, again, if you're on PC, you will not have to hit function along with the F7 if you set that as the key. Command function F7 will flip my canvas. So that's really, really neat. It's very, very useful for painters and even for people who do photo comps and stuff like that. It can really bring out certain, you know, new, a new look on your image. So let's go ahead and collapse this to an icon and just redock this just to get it out of the way. All right, so let's minimize this. Now we're going to transfer it over to our Wacom. On a Mac, in order to get to your Wacom tablet settings, go under System Preferences. Let's see if this bring it up here. 
Oh, come on, mountain lion. Don't you fail me. There we go. So in system prefer preferences at the very bottom, we see Wacom tablet. It might be a little bit difficult to see because I have my 360 controller also hooked up to the computer. So yes, there's a little discrepancy in the font. This probably won't be there for you. So at the bottom is Wacom tablet. On a PC, if you want to get to your tablet settings, I believe you go under control panel and then to devices or device manager or input devices. So let's go ahead and open up our settings. Now I know this looks like a lot of information, but I am not, I'm not going to go through all of it. I might in another video if you would like me to. So let's go ahead and get through this. The tablet I have is the Intuos 4 and that's the one that, you know, I primarily use. I don't, I have another tablet, but I don't have it hooked up to this computer. So we have our tablet, uh, clicked, go under tool functions, grip, pen, and mouse. A little note about these two, these won't show up if you haven't used them yet. If you've installed your drivers using your software for that came with your tablet, this will show up. However, grip, pen, and mouse probably will not. The way to fix this is to just use them. Use your pen and your mouse for a few minutes and your system will automatically find them and put them in the tool tray. So if we go under applications here, we're working with CS6, but if you look, we don't have CS6 in the applications. Now a really cool thing about the Wacom tablet is if it's open, or if the program that you want to add is open, such as we have Photoshop CS6, it's open and running, we can go ahead and click this plus button and it'll show up right here. These are all the programs I have running at the time. Probably shouldn't have all these running all at once. But anyway, we can find it right here under currently open applications, or if it's not there, we can go to browse. course this is taking a lot longer than I would like it to because I have so many things open. Photoshop CS6, click the actual application at the top and then open. It'll show you the path for the application and click OK. So now we have our CS6 loaded in for our functions. We have to manually load it in for the grip pen again. It does not automatically put it in the tray for all these tools. The reason for this is it wants, Wacom wanted to provide a little bit more customization for these kinds of things. A lot of people gripe and say it's tedious and it should be automatic, but I personally prefer it because I don't use the mouse for anything, as you can see. So let's go to the grip pen and let's add CS6 the exact same way. Because it's currently open, it'll be right there. Click OK. And so now we have CS6 loaded in for our grip pen as well. If you want to delete a program, go ahead and click the program, hit the minus button. A prompt will ask you if you really want to delete it and then hit delete. So let's go over the pen just for a quick sec for our CS6. Make sure that we have grip pen selected. Go to CS6. I like a firmer tip feel. The tilt sensitivity is kind of not really important. If you, if you like more tilt sensitivity or if you experimented with it and you like it, then raise it. But I tend to leave it well alone. I like a bit firmer of a tip feel, so I have to push down just a little bit harder to get my dark lines or my thick lines. My eraser's the same. I like, you know, a little bit more firm of an eraser. Let's go back to pen here just real quick. The double click, right click, and double tip double click distance are perfectly fine. Just leave these alone. Mapping, this is very important. If you're right-handed, you want your express keys left. If you're left-handed, you want them right. Some people, however, actually have they can tilt, they can turn their tablet to have the express keys at the top. But because of this, if you have a widescreen monitor, like for instance, mine is uh, 16 by nine. So it's kind of, it's widescreen ratio. So it doesn't carry over very well to the tablet. And even if you go in and try and fix it by going to tablet area portion and mapping it out yourself, you'll see that it is actually mapped to the full tablet. However, it won't because your monitor is widescreen. In order for this kind of orientation for your tablet to work, you have to have a monitor that can swivel onto its side and then you can set the display settings as such that it's more of a portrait orientation rather than landscape. Some people I know do this because they work on portrait paintings and it's just a lot easier for them to work on a canvas and a screen that it's uh, kind of oriented the same way. So there's no weird kind of you know, you're working on a wide tablet, but the screen's kind of thin and tall. By default, this is what it looks like. Force proportions is not turned on. You want this turned on. The reason you want this turned on, let me grab my pen here, is if I go down to the bottom left-hand corner of my tablet, I'm at the bottom left-hand corner of my screen. 
if I go to the top right hand corner of my tablet, it's the same thing from my screen. This allows for a lot more of a natural flow and you have a lot more line control and it just works well with the natural kind of curving and movement of your wrist and your elbow, especially when you're doing like, f uh, you know, quick figure studies and that sort of thing. So make sure that's on. That's very important. So now that the pen's all set up, let's go into functions. I'm not going to get into the touch ring or the radio menu. This right here is the touch ring. I'm not going to get into these two things just because I don't mess with any of these settings. There's no reason to. And right here, I don't know any very, I don't know very many people that use it. I personally don't use it at all. Um, so if you want me to get into that kind of thing, I will, but you can always check out the documentation for your own tablet, or you can find a video on YouTube. I'm sure there's plenty out there that cover these kinds of things. So let's go to express keys and set these up. These bottom four, I've been using Photoshop for almost 10 years and I do not change these. These are perfectly fine. The modifiers, as long as you understand what modifier keys do in Photoshop, you're fine. Um, if you want to know more about modifier keys and what they do in Photoshop, you can open up Photoshop and go under Photoshop preferences and then under interface, I believe it is. Um, you can find all the hotkeys and you can find out what pressing shift with which tool will give you like what effect. Like for instance, if I hit uh, shift while I have my brush, come on. Let me undo that there. Some preferences got mixed around. Let's go ahead and hold option with my brush and you see that it turns into an eyedropper. So I can sample colors locally and start blending my colors a little bit better, which is cool. Um, so that's how modifier keys work. Again, I can go into that if you want me to. It's not really necessary for the purposes of this video. So let's go ahead and add that action that we recorded in Photoshop CS6 to this. Be sure that you are in your application. As soon as we move from the grip pen to the functions, it automatically chose all other. Be sure you're under Photoshop CS6. Go to this top one right here. Now you can set it to a click. If you have a fourth or fifth button on your mouse, that's what those are for. I only have a three button mouse like most people. Or you can set it to a modifier such as shift, command, option, or control. The radio menu, which I never use, you'll probably never use it, or you may. And then all these other presets. The switch applications is pretty nice actually, I kind of like it. Um, it allows me to quickly change between Maya and Photoshop and vice versa, or, v or ZBrush, that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and add the keystroke that we added as the uh, recorded action in Photoshop CS6. So if you remember, because I'm on a Mac, I have to hit function. If you're on PC, again, you won't have to hit function for this, but I have to hit command function F7. If I hit OK, it'll ask me to name it. And I'm going to go ahead and name this flip H for flip horizontal. Hit OK. Now that we have that set up, you'll see if you look down on your tablet, there's LEDs next to the buttons. If you see the top one that we just reassigned, it hasn't changed. That's because Photoshop isn't open. So if we make sure all these settings are, settings are good and we close this, and we go ahead and reopen Photoshop, your tablet will automatically change to Flip H at, up at the top if you did everything right. So now let's go ahead and test this out. And there we go. Hitting the Flip H Express key will flip my canvas horizontally. Again, this is fantastic for painters, for people who are really sticklers for composition. Obviously, you, you absolutely should be a stickler for composition. Um, so yes, I hope this helps and I hope this is the start of a uh, beautiful journey. Um, and we make more and more videos. I get some more people involved, some people who are interested. I know some other people are already interested in helping making videos as well. I really hope this helps, this little tip. Um, so yeah, if you like what you watch, go ahead and like my video, subscribe to my channel, comment me, let me know what tutorials you'd like to see. I will get to them if I, if I absolutely you know need to. If it's crucial, if a lot of people ask for it, I will definitely get it out to you guys. So yes, I hope this helps. I hope you continue watching my videos and have fun guys.